بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي امين يا رب Today I would like to um, talk about how to discover Allah and how me and you we know Allah but we haven't discovered Allah It's like you know the North Pole exists but you haven't really discovered it till you've been there uh, it's one thing to know the North Pole exists. It's another thing to watch, uh, to see it through a telescope or see it through satellite imagery, right? To actually have that discovery, to have the feeling that you've been there, that you know it. And it's not just something that is of knowledge, but it is something more than knowledge. It is much more than knowledge. See, it's one thing to know the North Pole exists. It's another thing to fly over the North, North Pole. And it's another thing to live in the North Pole. And the same thing is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is one thing to know Allah intellectually. But it is a whole different thing when you begin to realize who is Allah, who is Allah, who is He, and how great He is, and how awesome He is, and how perfect He is. And how can you do that? How can you have such a discovery where you discover Allah? It's not... You know, uh, it's not just a moment in your life. Like, boom, I discovered Allah. For Allah to come to someone's knowledge, for example, a person who becomes Muslim, he, he converts to Islam, he becomes Muslim, he takes shahada, that is an acknowledgement of the knowledge that it's a priori, they call it in, in philosophy, that is the acknowledgement of knowledge that's already with him, and now he's saying yes. But to, to realize and to acknowledge is the difference. We all acknowledge, for example, everybody that you generally watches my YouTube videos generally acknowledges that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists. But we don't realize who He is. They didn't realize the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so this is where. So Quran gives us one of the ways in which we can have discovery of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's really two ways, but I want to focus on one way. And then what do I want from you? What I want from you is to spend some time discovering Allah. I want you to spend some time knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let us see what the Quran says. And then your homework is to do this. Because if you listen to me, right, and if you have some sense of affinity towards me, then I really, 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 really think it's important to take out, you know, 10 minutes a day, 5 minutes a day until this strikes, until this happens, until this flip switches. You have to do it and you have to work on it and you have to work on it until you're not somebody who just says, I know the North Pole exists versus somebody who's flown over the North Pole and has seen the North Pole. Um, somebody who's seen ice from the North Pole how cold it is, he's felt it, for example, is very different from a person who's read it in a book. Knowledge in a book, in, in a sense that, you know, uh, we, ha we overvalue books now. Because what Islam really values more than book knowledge is the self-experience. And I'm going to talk about that one day. But this is what I want you to see from Quran, and this is what I want you to apply until it hits you. Okay? So, who are the scholars of Islam? According to the Quran, it is these people who have been through this process, who have been through this process. This is a person who knows Allah. Not somebody who can tell you the masail or the issues of salah and what are the requirements of salah? Are they five or are they 13 or are they more or are they less? You know, what are the, what are the wajiba, etc., etc. et cetera. The, somebody can know all the fiqhi rules and still not know Allah. Somebody can know all the rules of fiqh, all the rules of sharia, and still does not fear Allah, does not see the awesomeness of Allah, and somebody can fear Allah, fear Allah, fear Allah, but he doesn't know many rules. Okay, so let's see. <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, let me just take this to actually, ألم ترى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ألم ترى أن الله أنزل من السماء ماء 
Do you not see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sent down from the sky? فَأَخْرَجْنَا بِهِ ثَمَرَاتِ مُخْتَلِفًا أَلْوَانُهَا Do you not see that Allah sent down from the waters, from the uh, water from the sky? فَأَخْرَجْنَا uh, uh, And then he took out because of that process بِهِ ثَمَرَاتٍ مُخْتَلِفًا Different types of thamarat, different types of fruits, okay? Alwanuha, different types of fruits of different colors. Wamin al Jibali, and do you not see the mountains? Judadun, Bildun, Wahumrun, Muhtalifun, Alwanuha. And you look at the mountains also with different like streaks, okay, of white and red and different colors. Okay. Wa Rabi Busud and those that have very dark black color mountains. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues after mentioning this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ And, um, and, and um, all of the human beings, how they are variant colors and variant types. Do you not see this? وَالدَّوَابَ And all the different types of animals. Do you not see this? وَالْأَنْعَامِ And even the cattle, even the different types of goats, even the different types of lambs, even the different types of cows, the buffalo, the ox, all of these. وَالْأَنْعَامِ مُخْتَلِفٌ أَلْوَانُهُ All the beautiful different colors that they have. كَذَلِكَ Just like that. And after Allah mentions the things of His creation, what does Allah say? إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ الله Indeed, those fear Allah. Min ibadihi from his servants. Al ulama'u. They're the ones who have true knowledge. In Allah Azizun Ghafur. Allah is Al Aziz, all powerful and Ghafur and forgiving. You see, you have to ponder over the creation of the heavens and the earth. You have to ponder over the creations of the heavens and the earth. This is the way to get to know Allah. And Allah has now, because miracles have stopped. Wait, watch what I'm about to say. Because miracles of the prophets have stopped. And the prophet's miracle was the Quran. And because the prophet said, لا تنقط إجائبه It's marvels, it's, it's wonders will never finish the Quran. And because Allah said, سنريهم آياتنا في الآفاق وفي أنفسهم We will continue to show you our signs. In the horizons and in your own selves, hatta until until Allah will keep showing you His signs, keep showing you His signs, so you get to know Allah. Hatta yatabayyana annahul haq until Allah Allah makes it clear this is the truth, this is the haq. But how is that going to happen? Sanurihim ayatina fil afaq. We will show them our signs in the horizons, wa fi anfusihim and in themselves. And then when you see those signs, you see the black hole, for example. There, for somebody who sees the black hole, he will realize the when he realizes how big and awesome and powerful is the black hole, he will realize, oh, how power! You know, this is just um, Allah created this. So just imagine how powerful He is. Somebody else will see an atom. Somebody will see a frog. Somebody will see another animal. Somebody will see everyone. Allah has created something for you and for me to see to that will click inside me and you will click inside me and you when we see it it will change us because that is the, that is the quality that we needed to see let's go back to the Quran and then I will uh, say a few more words okay Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ فِي خَلْكِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Indeed, in the creation of the heavens and the earth. وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ And in the alteration of the day and the night. Right? Allah created the heavens and Allah created the earth. And then the day and the night, right? Whether you look at it from the perspective of our bio rhythms, whether you look at it from the perspective that, you know, they spent a lot of money to find out the blue sky is the right color for our computer screens. And the green color on the earth is the right color for our eyes. Okay? In fi khalqi samawati wal ardi wa akhtilaf al layli wal nahar la ayatin li ulil albab. There are signs for people of pure understanding. What do they do when they, this pondering over the heavens and the earth? Allah says, Alladina yadkuroon Allah. Those who remember Allah, they're doing dhikr of Allah. Subhanallah, subhanallah. But 
what what is the impetus behind it what is the reason behind it will come alladhina yadhkurun allah those who remember allah qiyama wa qu'udan wa ala junubihim standing and sitting and laying on their sides <coughs> laying on their sides like the prophet sunnah sallallahu alaihi wa yatafakkarun and they ponder they ponder they do reflection they think deeply they think deeply they think deeply because you can only know Allah by His creation. And they ponder over the heavens and the earth. And they come to the conclusion after looking at the heavens and the earth, they say, oh, all of this is not in waste. This, All of this has no purpose. Meaning all of this is not just for no purpose. It's not played. This is, this is created by a master, right? Subhanaka faqina adhab al nar. Oh Allah, you're perfect. Save us from the hellfire. Okay? What is what is the point I'm trying to make? The point I'm trying to make is that how if you want to not only know Allah, but you want to realize Allah, you want to discover Allah, you want to have a self-discovery of Allah, you want to feel like, you know, I want to worship the one who made the black hole. In, in fact, when you connect it to the Qur'an and you find that the black hole is mentioned in Qur'an, right? فَلَا أُقْسِمُ بِمَوَاقِئِ النَّجُومِ إِنَّهُ قَسَمُ لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ عَظِيمُ Allah says, no, I swear by the places where the stars, they all sink. That's a black hole. إِنَّهُ قَسَمُ لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ عَظِيمُ It is a great oath if you did but know. Right? It's a great oath if you did. If you just ponder over the black hole, and then you realize that is Allah who made that. And then further you find that in the Quran. Right? Nurun ala nur. Then you look at the universe. Wa inna laha la You say Allah is creating this and Allah is making it bigger and bigger, expanding the universe. Like I want to. You should feel after pondering, after serious pondering, after serious thinking, you will want to worship. The Allah who created the universe. And, and it is so interesting. It is so interesting. That you know this is what how Allah introduces himself in Quran. And I'm going to talk more about this at some other time. Because I don't want this talk to get too long. But Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. He's Rabbul Alameen. Master, the creator, the sustainer, the caretaker of the universe. Of all of creation. And so there is something in Allah's creation that is... That would that if you pondered upon his greatness, his power, Allah Qadri, they didn't care for Allah as they ought to. We can't even care for Allah as we ought to. We can't know the awesomeness of Allah even by studying his creation. We cannot, you know, we can't fathom, but we can have a slight realization, moments of realization by pondering over his creation. And one of the bad things about the modern times is that we've been divorced from nature and we've been divorced from the creation of Allah and we've in insulated ourselves with our own creation and our own things and uh, our own you know things so the thing is is that uh, this is homework that you have to do that you know when you read the Quran it takes you to the universe and then when you go to the universe it should take you back to the Quran and this, this relationship, where you're looking at the universe and it's reminding you of Allah. It's reminding you of the awesomeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And, and, وَالسَّمَاءِ وَالطَّارِقِ وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الطَّارِقِ وَالسَّمَاءِ وَالطَّارِقِ But the sky that knocks when you look at the neutron star and how it's knocking, right? In the universe. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ وَالسَّمَاءِ وَالطَّارِقِ وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الطَّارِقِ النَّجْمُ الثَّاقِبِ Now what do you know about this? This neutron star that's knocking at night, right? It is a comet that's moving. It's moving in its, in its orbit. You know, when you look at this and you realize this is the truth, and not just that this is the truth, but rather, you know, I you have to realize that I don't realize how great Allah is. That I want to worship this Allah because I am, you know, I, I get it. I get it. I get how, how I realize that he's greater than I think he is. He's much greater than what I think he is. But by looking at his creation, I have an appreciation for who he is. Right? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the, the, the ability to ponder over the heavens and the earth and to come to that, that, that realization 
that discovery that when you to discover to think about something Allah created is to discover Allah because you cannot and the prophet said this you cannot think about Allah you can think about his creation and use his creation to discover him if you want to understand beauty look at his creation then that will show you the beauty of Allah if you want to understand power study the creation of Allah that will show you Allah's power then when you realize that and you're praying to Allah and you realize that you're be, you're you're before the one who is all powerful right so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that feeling that iman and for that we have homework homework is to discover Allah's creation this is the obligation of every mu'min it's the right of every mu'min to know Allah it's the right of every mu'min to ponder Allah's creation right and this universe is like, it's, you know, like when a girl uh, is trying to give a hint to a guy that, you know, I like you. So she gives, she doesn't say something directly, but she gives him chocolate or she gives him something else. And she's saying, the girl is saying, you know, you know, I'm giving you a hint. Allah is like, look at my creation. Discover me who I am. Look at my awesomeness. Look at my power. Look at my beauty. Look at the sky. Right? What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in Surah Al-Mulk? Right? Uh, that look at the sky. Right? Yanqalib uh, ilayk al-basar. Your eyes will come back. Thummar ji al-basara karratain. Thummar ji al-basara karratain. Go back and look again. Yanqalib ilayk al-basar al-khasiyan wa huwa hasir. Your eyes will get tired, but you will not be satisfied looking at the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You get tired and wearied, but the, the, you, you will want more. If you start on this journey, if you start on the journey of looking at Allah's creation and recognizing Allah through His creation, you will want more. And when you stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you've pondered over that creation of Allah, then you will really be in a state of dhikr. Okay? Then you will really be a person of knowledge, a person of understanding. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make me and you do dua for me, that Allah guide me, and I will do dua for you too inshallah may allah guide all of us especially all the subscribers that listen to me may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon us guide us and jazakumullah khairan assalamu alaikum warahmatullah make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas jazakumullah khairan assalamu alaikum warahmatullah أشهد أن لا